From choosing posh and casual outfits to raising royal children in a modern way, Princess Catherine definitely took a lot from Princess Diana's example. She's an inspirational woman to, to look up to. Let's look closer at what the two princesses have in common and how they both made changes in the British royal family. Princess Diana was a true fashion icon. Her every look was discussed, adored and wanted by many. And Catherine is no different. Plus, she often pays tribute to her late mother-in-law with her fashion choices. She replicates Diana's eye-catching prints, style tricks and stunning dress silhouettes. Like this sparkling gold dress with a deep V neckline. It's reminiscent of Lady Di's metallic gown, with its similar neckline, puffed shoulders and waist-cinching detail. And it's not a coincidence, both outfits were created for the premieres of the James Bond franchise. For a more special occasion, the birth of her youngest son, Kate also trusted Diana's style. She appeared at St Mary's Hospital in a red dress, paired with a white Peter Pan collar, just like Diana did after she gave birth to Harry. Not many people know that most Diana-inspired looks actually broke royal protocol. Take this open gown with ruffles that Diana wore to her first official royal event. Royal insiders said the Queen wasn't happy about the colour, as black is usually only worn for mourning. Kate risked that rule too. After her wedding to Prince William, she wore a similar dress. Middleton also doesn't care that open shoulders aren't allowed for royals. Here she definitely took inspiration from her mother-in-law. Check out that outfit. Kate finished her green boat-cut dress with a matching emerald tiara. It was one of Diana's favourite combinations. Speaking about jewellery, Catherine inherited a large part of Diana's collection. If other royals are willing to hide the late princess's legacy, Kate proudly shows it off. These elegant earrings were absolute favourites of Lady Di. Now Kate wears them often for gala occasions. She even wore them for King Charles's coronation as her way of honouring Diana's memory on the momentous day. William's wife has also worn his mother's pearl bracelet several times, and a four-string pearl choker. One particularly special fact is that Kate never changed her iconic sapphire engagement ring, which was made for Diana. The new Princess of Wales inherited a taste for glitz. Kate couldn't resist a red pedicure and manicure, a beauty choice that seemingly departed from royal protocol. It was a subtle nod to her mother-in-law, who had a penchant for playful nails. On busy days, Kate carries a large handbag. This was also a habit of the late Diana's, and at the same time a strict don't-do in the royal family. A woman of such special status is expected to go out with a clutch or a small purse, but what if it doesn't fit everything she needs? A similar situation arose with regard to sports events. Previously, royalty had to look their best whenever they went out in public, even though doing some activities in heels and skirts wasn't so comfy or practical. So the late Princess of Wales dropped that rule in favour of a full tracksuit. Catherine picked up on Diana's idea and now attends some events in sports clothes. The day after King Charles's coronation, Kate chose a combination of a formal jacket and sporty shoes while partaking in the big lunch project. It's not an entirely new look for a royal. Through her casual but classy outfits, Kate is doing something Diana did first, bringing relevance to the monarchy. Diana was the first royal to choose affordable clothes. Her Gap sweaters, Reebok sneakers and Levi's jeans still inspire girls today to choose simple but stylish looks. What do we see now? This blazer of Catherine's is from the mass market brand Zara. It was sold out hours after Her Royal Highness was spotted in it. The elegant blue dress Kate wore for her anniversary cost a little more than £100. And the princess doesn't just wear royal jewels either. At the BAFTAs this year she finished her couture dress with Zara earrings that cost just £20. For everyday looks, Kate often chooses something from the British brand Accessorize. Their jewellery prices start at £4. One particularly show-stopping item, however, is the headpiece Catherine wore on Charles's coronation day. She opted for a silver accessory rather than a diamond tiara. Such fashion decisions in the royal family were inadmissible at all times. The British monarchy has one of the most impressive fine jewellery collections in the world. Some estimates put its value at around £4 billion so it's an unspoken rule for the princess to show off in luxurious diamond pieces. However, Princess Diana was the first to challenge this norm. Back in the 1980s, her glittering crescent moon earrings, which turned out to be trinkets, even caused a scandal in the media. Through these small details, Diana showed the people she served that she is one of them. Connecting with the public was a big deal for Diana. She broke royal protocol in favour of her fans. Diana was the first princess to be generous with hugs. She picked up the kids who greeted her on the streets, and sometimes even exchanged kisses with the little ones. While the monarchy didn't share her openness, the media labelled Diana the people's princess. Now the Brits have handed that title over to Kate. 
Happy birthday to the people's princess. It's obvious why. From day one in the royal family, Kate became famous for her warm personality. Remember that cute moment when she let a toddler play with her purse? And when she started a conversation with a random little fan? She's very thoughtful. Um, she's very easy to get along with. I think she's been very well brought up. She comes from a lovely family. She's got two feet firmly on the ground. For the 12 years of her royal service, Kate has focused all her attention on humanitarian work and charity. Working with kids, mostly in the areas of early childhood development and diseases, Her Royal Highness has taken health concerns to the next level. The new Prince and Princess of Wales were among the first in the world to raise the question of cyberbullying and kids' mental health issues, and they had a great example of a pioneer. Remember when Princess Diana shook hands with an HIV-positive boy in 1987? That was a game-changing moment in the public's perception of HIV-AIDS. When it came to her own kids, Lady Di was also ready to challenge stereotypes and norms. The royal family has had tons of restrictions on how to raise little princes and princesses. It ranges from breastfeeding bans to not being able to travel and sending children to boarding schools away from home. And Diana was the first royal mother to fight for the right to keep her sons close to her. Prince William was the first royal baby who was brought along on a royal trip. She insisted that she would be bringing him. She would not leave him behind. Now we can see Kate Middleton as a hands-on mother, She took George on a tour of Australia before he turned one. Now, as a mother of three, she always makes sure her kids, Prince George, Prince Louis and Princess Charlotte, are close to her. Reprioritising yeah. family life, home life and all that it takes really in, in raising children today because it is tough. Even though she can, or is expected to, delegate everything to her assistants, Kate chooses to be involved in all parenting processes. Her Royal Highness allows the heirs of the British throne to get a semblance of a normal life by taking them to zoos and playgrounds. It's exactly the same style that Princess Diana practiced with William and Harry. She wanted them to be royal princes, but at the same time, she wanted them to be children too. People still remember their fun outings to Thorpe Park. The late Princess of Wales sometimes snuck in fast food with her boys instead of lavish dinners in the palace. The chef of Kensington Palace recalled, I remember the princess came into the kitchen one day and said, cancel lunch for the boys, I'm taking them out. We're going to McDonald's. And I said, oh my God, your royal highness, I can do that. I can do burgers. And she said, no, it's the toy they want. Even though Kate Middleton doesn't approve of fast food, she still organizes simple picnics for her family, and she does it by herself. Kate doesn't have a chef. She loves being in the kitchen, creating simple dishes for the two of them and the children. With such a grounded and innovative approach, the new Princess of Wales is definitely raising open-minded and grounded successors, and she is continuing Diana's mission of making a difference in the royal family and in the world. At the same time, a lot of people see unique traits in Kate's personality. She's the sort of girl who will walk into a room and light that room up. Um, not in the same way that Diana did. Diana was a head turner. She was, you know, she was the glamour girl. She dazzled in diamonds. Kate is more understated. So she definitely adds her own elements to her princess legacy. Catherine radiates confidence, perhaps because she had quite a lot of time to prepare for her role as the wife of a future king. So we hope that the new chapter in her life will be steady, quiet and full of happiness. We'd love to hear your thoughts about the similarities of the two princesses in the comments below. And let us know which royal figure you'd like us to cover next.